Coach Eric. Hi, hey. Coach. How you What's doing? Up, hey, How thanks, you? Coach. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure. My pleasure. How you guys doing? I'm hanging in there. I haven't seen you. I haven't seen you since the 2006 uh, Final Four. Yeah, yeah. We sat next to each other, actually. We did. We watched the game. I together. remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? Where are you guys um, located? Uh, well, I'm in New Jersey where, you know, where Tony was born. We're all from New Jersey, you know. Mm-hmm. And my friend Rob, I met him like 11 years ago at, at a Nets game. And we became really good friends. And uh, we now that we have all this computer stuff, I actually went to broadcasting school. I worked at ESPN for two years and a half. And I've even done a few movies. I was actually in Men in Black 3, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we decided to do it. And Tony just said, Bob, I'll help you out. I'll see if I can get as many people as I can. And thank you so much for coming on. Oh, my pleasure, fellas. My pleasure. Yeah. So tell us about what you think here. What do you think is going to happen? We're back in it again. Yeah, the, the Bruins are back in it. Uh, uh, maybe a little bit tougher chore than, than uh, normal. But, yeah. you know, when, in 95, when we won it, no one picked us. Everybody thought Arkansas would just absolutely kill us. And. And when you're the underdog in this tournament, it's a huge advantage, huge advantage to be the underdog in this tournament. Yeah. And, and uh, if UCLA can get them in a slow down game like he did against Michigan, yeah, uh, they've got a chance. Now, yeah. Mark Few has been coaching a long time, so, and he knows he's got his own style and and, uh, you know, it's whoever controls the tempo of the game, probably. If UCLA can control it, they'll be in trouble. But uh, Gonzaga will be in trouble. But Gonzaga is really good at controlling the tempo. They got they I got know. I, I think they just want to take us and run us right out of the building. And I noticed in the Michigan game, we were slowing it down. And the announcer went, oh, this is Michigan Big Ten slow down basketball. But right now it's UCLA basketball. That's the way we play. Yeah, that's the way they play. They love to yeah. slow it down. It, and but it's been effective for him. He's very good in that kind of game. Yeah, right. He was he's like that in Cincinnati, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, Cronin, right. Yeah. Right. But I mean, Gonzaga's, I don't know. They're you know they've really shown some good, but I'll tell you, every time you see a guy play like Colorado played the greatest game I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And, and turned around against Florida State and they were just Dog me, horrible. Right, and and you know other guys have played like Michigan played great, great, great basketball, and they get against UCLA and they just walk it up, missed every shot, got tentative, could, didn't want to shoot. I mean, anybody wanted to shoot the ball at the end of the game. Yeah, so you don't know what's going to happen. That's why we're going to watch it. That's why we're going to watch it. You never know. You know, I told pretty my inspiring, brother, pretty hopeful. Yeah. You know, I, I told my brother, you know, he's like, oh, I don't know. I, I never thought they were going to lose a game so far. I go, yeah. And, and, uh, and he was like, I, I go, hey, you never know. Because my brother grew up an Orioles fan, you know. And when they played the Miracle uh, Mets, he still has scars to this day. Because, <laughs> you know, the Mets played out of their minds and, and won it. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And, and I, you know, we still make fun of him because I grew up a Mets fan. You know, we were from this area and. You know, they were my favorite team as a little kid, and I still give it to them every once in a while, you know. But, um, you know, like he's – he thinks they have a chance, but it's going to be really hard. It's really. going to be really hard, very difficult. If he yeah. hit them in a slowdown game, they've got a chance. But I don't know that they got enough guns for yeah. – the dog has got three first-round draft choices. But that doesn't mean you're going to win. I saw Jalen Brown play in the NCAA tournament. He got two points, and he was horrible. And so, you know – it doesn't measure out. You never know. Yeah, you never know. And I mean, even if they win, Coach, how do you feel about the potential matchup with Houston or Baylor? Well, I tell you, both are both are really good. Both are really good. Houston is a really strong. They got about five, all five of their guys are six four to six eight, and they're 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 men. They're they're no boys in, on the Houston team. Yeah, and uh, they're really they're really physical and strong and tough. And Baylor's got some. Fabulous athletes. Their three guards are terrific. 
they're better now than they have been in the past because everybody was high on on them in the past and they they never measured up. But so you know the best teams yeah. have made it uh, to the final four. Yeah, well, and you saw those games. Yeah, they're playing that way. They're we'll playing see. that way. But but Smith, you know, Smith being hurt really hurt them because he was their big scorer. Yeah, yeah, he's a good player. But this kid good from the, the transfer from Kentucky has just been amazing. For us. Well, you know, he's a transfer from Kentucky, but he's an LA guy. He went to Harvard Westlake out in the valley, and, uh -huh. and those kind of guys typically should have gone to UCLA in the first place. Probably so. Yes. Uh, <laughs> So, well, you know, this is sure to help the recruiting, though. I mean, yeah. UCLA's well, back. I think that's a plus right. for the young guys because Juang talks about playing here and playing in Poly and being able to go home and see his parents and sister and, and things, and hopefully that'll help. And that's Cronin's. You know, he's not from the area, so really doesn't know the high school coaches in the area very well. But to be able – the whole deal at UCLA is you've got to recruit the best players. Right. Juzang was the one of the best players, and he didn't get him early. And then last year they had four or five guys that uh, he, but he had a decent recruiting year. So he's got to get the best athletes, the best athletes in town. Right. Because uh, remember when I was coaching here, I kind of put a fence around Los Angeles, wouldn't let anybody come in and get get the top guys. Because if I didn't get the top guys, I wasn't going to be successful either. And, That's exactly right. Uh, yeah, and, we. Uh, and, and, you know, it's funny, my, my brother and I talk about that all the time because he always tells me, like, the best coaches take them as far as they can. And I told him that's true, but you still got to have the players. You know, oh, yeah. you still got to have the players. I mean, yeah. New England this year showed it. I mean, the big guy's gone. Brady's gone. And, you know, Belichick is great, but they couldn't do it. So, But to tell you how hard it is, you know, just think of Ralph Sampson and Tim yeah. Duncan yeah. and the – and 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 uh, – and, uh, the uh, Houston's five slam and jamma and the Fab Five. Yeah, right. Those teams never won it. Won it. Right. Never won it. They never won and, it. And uh, you know UCLA uh, coach Bartow and Larry Brown and and uh, and uh, uh, now Cronin and uh, Ben Howland and Ben Howland all took teams to the Final Four. Yeah, they, they didn't did. win it. They didn't win it. They didn't win so it. So it's hard. It's very, very difficult. And, right. And I, think, I think you have to be special to do that. So we'll see. Yeah. Now, Coach, that just begs the question. For you and your career, what are the, the all-time what might have been? Yeah, I mean, the, when you refer to five slam a jamma, that's a what might have been. How, what in your experience were the, just the teams, the players, the moments that just it should have happened, but it just didn't? Well, you know, if I went to Rhode Island, and we were in the Elite Eight, and we led the whole game. We led 39 minutes in that game. And, yeah. and when and they called eight straight fouls on Stanford, and their bench was up yelling, foul him, foul him, foul him, and he fouls him. The guy didn't call it, and they slapped the ball away and get a dunk and win the game. And uh, that's the hardest game I've ever lost in my life. And, and uh, uh, What about and, the Pepperdine? When you were Pepperdine, I know NC State took you guys out. And you but we missed, definitely, we, you missed the foul we shots. Missed, we missed two front ends of one and one. So it was really our fault. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you know, had to be. I don't ever, you know, you don't want a game to go. I was watching one game, the Texas Abilene Christian game. It comes yeah. down to the end of the game with a second go. There's one second to go, and there's a 50 50 ball, loose ball. Two guys go after it, and the official calls a foul in Texas, puts Abilene Christian line, they win the game. Right. Well, to me, that's a that's a cardinal sin for the officials to de decide who wins a game. And there was no – to me, there was no – that's a 50-50 ball. It's a free ball, and everybody's got a chance to go get it, and this guy calls a foul. And it, to me, it spoiled the whole game because I don't we like could, to see that. I don't like to see that happen. And, and we, could, uh, we could do a whole show on its own about how many times refs do that to you. Yeah, you and, know, and, and nobody will ever disagree. And quite frankly, it happened against Michigan. Michigan won their only national championship on a real bad call against. That's what I was telling Rob. Yeah, yeah, in '88, '89, and, and yeah, so you know you can go back, but you hate to see a game decided by a uh, official's call. Yeah. And and uh, I was hoping that wouldn't happen at the end of the UCLA game. Well, they wouldn't wouldn't call going to call foul on UCLA to put them on the line or something. 
because you, you would have heard me crying from your house. Michigan had the <laughs> Michigan had the ball three times right there at the end and three opportunities. And right, right. Of course, that Wagner went one for ten and uh, Smith went one for seven, so they were two for seventeen. That's going to beat you every time, probably. Yeah, you, Coach. What do you think about them chucking up threes all the time? Doesn't that kind you of know, drive you nuts? Well, I tell you, I. I Personally, to me, I think the threes hurt the game more than self. Thank you. See, I played the game every day as a kid, and I, we totally agree with that. Yeah, and I know Coach Wooden would agree with the same thing because it's yeah. such a beautiful, yeah. it's such a beautiful give and go and yeah. teamwork and, and passing more. and right. and you know, one time they told me that 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 Alabama shot 53s in a game or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know that to me, that's not basketball, but. You know, it's the way the game is today. Right. You know, like the other night, I, I was watching, and they were showing the three-point, you know, um, average. And one team was three for 15, and I'm sitting there going, if they were went inside, the percentage goes up. What if you're 10 for 15 inside? All of a sudden, you know, you get three bats 12, but then 10 is 20. All of a sudden, you, you know, that's a plus eight. You win the game instead of lose the game. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think just... that. I just always felt if I shot twos and you shot threes, I went inside and you went outside, I went every time. But right. some the percentages have changed a little bit. And I thought a lot of NBA guys, you know, Doc Rivers was a guy, he'll give you a two to stop your three. Right. And there's something to that because they have so many possessions in the game. We don't have that many possessions in the college game. Right. Um so, I Coach, just, I, I'm just wondering, sorry to interrupt you, Bob. That's okay. What do you think, what is the game lacking currently? What does it need? Well, with the three-point three point shot, you know, you, you cut out all the passing and the give and go and the, the, the teamwork kind of things. Uh, you know, a lot of guys come down, and, and I've always felt that one-pass shoot teams always lose. And there's a lot of one-pass, jack-it-up, three-point shot, you know, and so, and, and I won't give them credit. Kids can shoot the ball today, and, and they're yeah. great, great athletes. I mean, uh, they've taken athletics, athleticism to a different level, you know, even in high school. Uh, you know, you look at Houston. I mean, God, there's five men on that team. Boy, there are no boys on that basketball team. And right. You come out and play them. They're, they're, but everywhere, every team I look at is athletic and long and physical and athletic and run and jump. And, and uh, that's kind of the way the game's gone today. And, and I think the three-point shot has hurt the teamwork. The, the fundamentals. The, yeah, the fundamentals of the game, everything. Right, right. right. And, and, it had, and, and the NBA is even worse. You know, you got that right. How, how do you have a five on one and three of the five guys just stop behind the three point line? Yeah, you can have an easy yeah. layup and just go to the basket. Yeah, yeah, they come down and give up a and pass up a layup and take a three. Yeah, it's hard for that's really hard for me to accept. It's hard for me to watch because I'm an old yeah. Celtic fan. You know, I grew up and every year we'd win when I was little and and sometimes I'll watch them go. This ain't my Celtics anymore. Yeah, you'd, be, right uh, here. you'd beat the Lakers. Don't get don't get me started on you. Oh, Steve. I know it. I I have no <laughs> love for oh, the boy. Lakers. <laughs> The Lakers were the enemy. The rivalry is back. Yes, the Lakers were the enemy. But but yeah. I, I, I love them growing up. And uh, they taught everybody how to win. because And, you know, when I saw San Antonio do it with Duncan, it reminded me of those old Celtic teams. Because, you know, everybody played together. And, and a lot of kids said, well, they can't, you can't play that way anymore. Well, Duncan did. And he, and he won yeah. five times. So I don't believe that. Doing the right thing in any age is the right thing to do. It's actually, and, you know, even a guy like Ginobili was a perfect example. He blended. Yeah. He never, never took more outside than he took inside. And he was a medium range game player. And mm -hmm. he was the ultimate pro to me when he was in his prime. I mean, I, I went to Houston. Uh, I went to Phoenix. Uh, Dan Tony, Dan Tony's dad beat us in a state championship game when I was in high school. Really, and and uh, so I've always been great friends with Mike, and I went over and watched them one time, and it was a and they they that's when they had Nash and Stoudemire, and they're a really good team, Marion and and uh, San Antonio had Duncan Ginobili and Parker. Mm -hmm. It was a double overtime game, one <laughs> of the greatest NBA games I've ever seen, and Ginobili got fifty. Wow, and it was just an absolutely spectacular. NBA game. 
And today, today I can't see that kind of game uh, because of so many three point shots taken. Right. And another problem with the three, look, I know they're making the really good players are making 40% or better, but that still means to me, 60% of the time you're not making it. That's not good odds. If you think of it that way. And yeah, and, and when you get in the playoffs and the, and the, and the defense heats up, they're that not going to let you. That yeah. percentage goes down a little bit. Yeah, James Harden's a perfect example because when they step up in the playoffs, you don't make them. Yeah, but let me tell you something. He, let the teams have worn him out in the playoffs. Yeah, I'm going to sit here and you can fight with me all you want, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. Who's having the second best year in the NBA this year is James Harden. Yeah, I mean, well, he he's a spectacular player because he does more than one thing. I mean, he's getting triple doubles night in and night out. He's getting assists. I mean, it's a 14, 15, 16, 18 assists a game and scoring. And how many guys do that? The only other guys, LeBron James. Right. Do you think do you think the Nets are going to win this year? Because they're really gearing for it. Oh, gosh. He just got Griffin and, and uh, yeah. who, who else they had? Uh, they- Aldridge, I think they picked up. Yeah, well, Marcus Aldridge. Good Lord. Right. How many guys can they have? Well, I guess if stacking the team works for LeBron, I guess the Nets can do it too, right? See, I disagree with that. You know, when you think about, you know, the other teams in the league, that's yeah. not right. It's, it's really not right for, for the Washingtons and Atlantas and other teams, you know, even Portland. And, and to have five, six good teams and 20-some bad teams, that's not good. That's not good for the league. Right. And I don't think, right. this is my Just opinion, I don't think that would have ever happened under David Stern. I don't think it would ever happen. Well, even when my brother was in the NBA, he used to say, he goes, there was good players on every team. This stuff about those players weren't that good is ridiculous. Yeah. And they had centers back then, a lot of these teams. So, yeah. you know, they were, they were competition. You know, you people, know? people want to argue about who's the best player to ever play the game. You know, Jordan, LeBron, yeah. and Kobe. And, but, mm-hmm. you know, you got you to gotta, you gotta start with Russell Chamberlain. Yeah, there you go. I'm prejudiced, but Kareem, I, know, I still know who the best is. And, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And That's Kareem right. Abdul-Jabbar, I still think they're the two best. When you, when you write down on paper Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I mean, he might be the greatest player that's ever played the game. Yeah, but that's then you right. look around at Will Chamberlain, There's somebody told me there's 100, rule, 100 records in the record book, and yeah. Will's got 67 of them. <laughs> just ask Jerry West. That's tell just you. insane. No, yeah. that's right. And, so, and, but that know, begs I, the question, Coach, sorry. That you know, who are the greats, the stars that probably should have gotten much more accolades than they are given that kind of gone under the radar, both in the past and present? Well, you know, I, I, I kind of have a little game I play and, and, and I got me a, I got me a team. I got Russell and Chamberlain and uh, Russell and Chamberlain. Favorites. I got West and Baylor and Oscar. Now I got me another yeah. team. I got me another team with Kareem and Walton, Bird and Jordan and Magic. And I got me another team. Good luck being got, those teams. <laughs> and I got me another. Wait a minute now. I got me another team with Shaquille, Durant, LeBron, Steve Nash. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I kind of play with those things and have fun mm-hmm. with them. It's it's, uh, it's right. a lot. Of fun. But so, I agree you with know, you. Different, different eras is pretty hard. You know, Jerry West. Sure, West pretty good player. The, the I'd logo, say so, yeah. The logo was pretty good. Yeah, he was. Young, young, young kids don't relate to that, and that, but he, he was pretty good. You're darn right he was. And I agree with, like, there was a, um, like a, a, a stat thing on, on my Facebook one night. My friend put it up, and it had, you know, every stat Jordan had on the right and every stat Kareem had on the left, and they were pretty much identical, or Jabbar had more. And he put underneath, he goes, and they still think Jordan's the best ever. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he can't. There was no, they changed rules for Jabbar. That's all you need to know. There was yeah. no dunking for a while. I was in the gym and I dunked on Washington State, and the next day they changed the rule. Yeah. The next day. Next day. The next day. <laughs> oh, you were there? In next January. day. Well, yeah. hey, he, he beat the uh, Harlem Globetrotters when he played for the Washington Generals one game. He wasn't supposed to do that. He was supposed to lose. That's oh, I wish that was on tape. That would be a that great is one true, to see. actually. When I was a senior in high school, a senior in college, we graduated and 
and uh, the Globetrotters came through and we played an ex the college all-stars played an exhibition game against yeah. the Globetrotters. And it was the one year where you had to lay out to, you had to go to, you graduated from college, but Wilt didn't graduate. He just went on and played with the Globetrotters. Globetrotters, right. Big, big matter. So we came in, I played against Will in the, in the, when I was a senior in college, and he was with the Globetrotters. Wow. What was that like? Amazing. Oh, hey, Coach, he was thin, right. wiry, too. Yeah. fast, yeah. quick. He, he ran to 440 in high school and college. Really? Yeah, Will was a splendid, was athlete. splendid athlete. And, and nobody ever scored 50 points a game for the whole season, a game like he did. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> See, when you talk about Wilt, you're saying fifth average 15 25 for a season. And you right. talk about you talk about right. talk about Oscar average a double triple double for a season. I mean, right. things like that don't happen. No, no they don't. It probably won't ever happen again. No. And see, even though the players are more talented, I just don't know if they're as good as the because if everybody's 21 years old on the same day, that'd be a heck of a tournament, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> you really? know. It really would. But uh, so what do you tell me about the UCLA team in 95, everything you guys went through? Because I knew you were going to win the whole time. I kept telling my brother that. Well, you know, again, I don't think I don't think you can win a national championship unless you've gone through some adversity first. Sure. And Gonzaga a couple of years ago got beaten a championship game. So they've been through adversity. Maybe not this group of kids, but uh uh, uh, their school has, and, and they faced it. it, it uh, <clears throat> so we had gone through some adversity the year before, but in the year before that, the, we, we Fab Five beat us in overtime. So this group of kids yeah, were really sure resilient, and they've been together a long time. They had great leadership, three seniors, uh, George Zini, Ked O'Bannon, and Ty Sidney, and, and uh, great work ethic, great leadership, and they really played together. They liked each other. They shared the ball. Yeah, those kinds of things are really hard to, to develop over a course of years. And, and uh, you know, so many young kids today have, have people in the background talking to them. And, and yeah, you know, that's what my brother says. AAU coaches and all this kind of stuff. And some even have agents sitting there waiting on them. And, and uh, uh, it wasn't quite that way in 95. So, uh, uh, it was a it was a great great run. The young kids played really really well together, and it was a great great time. Yeah, and you guys were. I never doubt it. My brother wasn't sure, and I'm like, no, not this time. You're winning, and I know it. Your brother's all over the map. I know, and and don't ever pick with him. He's the worst pick on earth. I took from the Baltimore Orioles on down. He's never gotten one. Right. He's the kiss of death, Bob. He's like the you kiss said. of death. You pick Syracuse. Yeah, he's. He I, he's really nervous. He thinks he thinks UCLA might win this thing, which scares me. <laughs> it scares me a lot, you know. But um, to beat Houston, he, by the way, just yeah, put that in right. But uh, yeah, he's um, he's a lousy picker. I can tell you that right now. But uh, that year, I knew you were winning. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. Well, so, coach, what's? Ahead. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. I was just going to ask what what. And you can finish your thought. Just what what parting wisdom would you uh, give to aspiring players and coaches right now? Well, the greatest thing that a young person and a, and a co young coach needs is patience. Patience on their game to develop, and patience as a coach on your team to develop. So you really need to 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 have patience uh, to wait on everything to come about. Uh, 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 putting everything together is really, really, you know, it's kind of difficult to, for all the pieces to fall in the puzzle every single time. But uh, uh, young kids, uh, you know, they've got to, they got to, to keep up today. You got to be good in the weight room. You got to be good on the court. You got to be good in the off season, improving your, your individual game because you improve as a team during the season. And as an individual, you improve in the off season. So they've got to spend a lot of time because every time they're not, somebody else is. And when those two meet, that somebody works a little bit more is going to probably win. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, 
you know, you want to try to get as much out of the talent as you have. So, you, you know, some team, we have nutritionists now. We have strength and conditioning coaches. Uh, today we've got everything for young guys to, to reach the pinnacle of their talent given. So right. they should take advantage of it. Well, it's all there for them. Biggest problem with young kids today is they want to be, they want to be Clayton Kershaw at 20. Mm. They want to be able to, right. you know, they want to, they want, they want what you got and, and, and they don't want to have to work for it. They don't want to put in the time and effort and energy to take it takes to get there and, and they want it just now, right now. And that's not the way life works. No. And, um, and they're lied to by, by certain people along the way, thinking they're going to be, you know, somebody they're not just got to be themselves and whatever happens, happens, you know, you're never going to be like somebody else. You're just not, you know, most kids want to, you know, if you tell them, well, you know, your defense isn't quite good enough. They don't hear that. They want to hear what's positive to them. And, and, you're not ready for the NBA. Oh, don't tell me I'm not ready for the NBA. That's crazy. I'll, I'll take my chances, you know. And like, like you know, there's 100, there's 60 guys taken, and there's 140 or 50 guys in the draft. Right. I mean, that, that, that's crazy. And and somehow, some way, the NBA and, and the NCAA has got to get together and say, young guys that don't get drafted, should have an opportunity to come back to school. I don't care if you declared for the draft or not. Yeah, I was you don't, that. Or if you declare for the draft, don't get drafted. I mean, that's that's the stupidest thing in the world. Right. And and I take it you're not a big fan of kids leaving early because I think they should stay longer. They're not ready for the NBA, a lot of them. Well, you know, uh, LeBron was certainly ready. And Kobe well, yeah, ready. There, there's exceptions, there's right, a lot. Few and, but not few a lot. and far between. Right, it's exactly. Hard to, Hard to argue when they can go to war for your country and you can't go out and make a living. I, hard to argue that. But, you know, football, the NFL, you can go in early in the NFL, but the owners have agreed we're not drafting you. You're not going to get drafted. <laughs> right. So if, if we could have something like that, it, it, uh, you'd like the young kids to stay in school. Our, our NCAA tournament is really diluted. From what it was, I was well, of course, yeah, you know what it is, it's not fair to the colleges because you know the kids are leaving so much, they're leaving but too. You know soon. what? It hasn't changed, it's not fair to the NBA, hasn't, changed, ready the, for hasn't huh? changed the interest in the NCAA tournament. No, because it's the tournament, you know what? Sometimes it's, it's just the product itself that you love, you know, and yeah. it sometimes doesn't matter who's playing, but you're right, I mean. And then you have this year, which has been wild, which is actually helping the NCA. The wild well, card tournament. Um, yeah. That's kind of what it is. Yeah, right. Really? The NCA is always kind of, if you ever think of it, they've always had the Cinderella's. So they, the NCA, so that's, it's benefited there. But at the end, it's still the big names that usually win it. So but they get the best of both worlds. You know, the NCA always seems to make out like a bandit. There's two ones and a two in the finals. Right, exactly. Exactly. And one wild card, and, and uh, <clears throat> so the tournament is is really really exciting for people. Right. So, how about your your um your uh, coaching job at uh, Northridge? Do you oh, like I'm it? Having, I'm having a lot of fun. I turn around one day, and Mark Godfrey, my assistant at UCLA, got the job. Yeah, at Northridge. It's about twenty minutes from my house, and he says, "Come on out and help me." And I've had a lot of fun. Go Good. out there. And- Kids are respectful and they want to learn, and, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. I just uh, I'm kind of casual with it. I mean, you know, when you're when you work in a job like 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 coaching, like I have done my whole life. When I'm in it now, when I don't need to work, and I'm not looking for a head coaching job, it's a lot different. Right. It's a lot different. Right. So I'm having fun. So well, that's good. So you don't want to be a head coach no more. No, no, no. I okay. My, I had a great run. I'm, I'm, I had a great run. Okay. Well, and, and what are the advantages of being an assistant coach on a college program? You don't. You don't have to take all the crap. Pressure. So <laughs> That's true. Everybody gives you grief. The right. teachers right. give you grief. The fans give you grief. I can, he's in. He's in charge of all academics. He's in charge of the whole team. If one guy gets out of line or. 
steals something, you know, it comes back on the coach. If a guy doesn't go to study hall, it comes back on the coach. If he fails a class, it comes back on the coach. And you mm-hmm. lose games, it comes back on the coach. Everything's Even, on the head coach. It's not that's on right. the system. You know what? Oh, so you can just you can just coach. Yeah. That's I, great. And, that, and that's what I that's what I told him I wanted to do. I just come out there and coach help you coach your team. And that's all I do. I don't uh, do much of anything else. I do a little recruiting. You know what? My brother told me this story about Wooden. Uh, when they lost the year with Bill when he was a senior, the next year after he left, UCLA won with Dave Myers as a center. And some fan ran up to him after they won it and said, thanks, Coach, for not letting us down this year like you did last. The guy just won seven previously. Yeah. Nobody's happy. <laughs> you can't please anybody. Uh, you know? When- you know, like Mark Mark Fuse built a monster up at Gonzaga, and now he's got to feed it every year. Yeah, that's you right. Build a monster, you got to feed it every you year. You got to keep feeding the monster. You know, it's it gets tough. Uh, Roy Williams retired today, and Lon Kruger retired because it's a it's become a twenty four seven really really difficult job. And it's always yeah. been that way, but it's it's hard today, boy. You think uh, North Carolina take a little bit of a hit now that he's gone until they can. Find somebody to replace them. That's, Depends on who they hire. Right. 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 Uh, I, I suspect that's going to happen to Duke, too, because I know Coach K, you know, he's getting older. So. So is Beheim. So is Izzo. Right. And those guys, a uh, few years, they'll all be gone. And be a whole, let, new, whole new ball game. Whole new world. Yeah. Yep. And, and an, unless you're an exceptional coach to follow, I don't think I want to follow any of those guys because no. it's a loser <laughs> situation. You don't want to follow me. What are you talking about, Bob? It's, the Carrier Dome has 30,000 fans. A, a great coach wants his lining right up for the cues. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It, it's a tough thing. Um, you know, to, I mean, that's like following Wooden. Are, are you crazy? I lived out here when, they, when, when Coach Wooden retired, and right. boy, oh boy, oh boy. It was very difficult. I think only Denny Crum or Gary Cunningham would have been accepted by the Blue Nation. Right. And Denny okay. wanted it, and Coach stayed an extra year, and he ended up in Louisville. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened. Now, you were on UCLA's assistant coach, right? In 77? I was with Gary Cunningham, 77, 79. You yeah. were. Yeah, we and we with Larry Brown, too, went to 79, 80 when they went? No, I got the pepper down job that year. Okay. That. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't like Cunningham wasn't good because they did really well. 58 and 8, 58 and 8, yeah, 58 and 6 or 58 and 8 or something like that. That's pretty fair. Yeah. That yeah. Wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Gary, Gary was a terrific coach. He was really, he's so smart. I know. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's like a botany, he's a botany professor is what I, I used to call him because he had, he had a major in botany and He's so oh, really? smart. It was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, he, he he was a great teacher of the game of basketball. We're Probably gonna try to problem. we're gonna try to get him on too, because Tony talks to him all the time. Yeah. And I think yeah. he said he's willing to come on. Yeah. We're just trying to get as many good people on as we can. He's a good man. He is a good man. I love that guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's a good person. That's my brother said he's very smart. Yeah. He's yeah very, good guy. I, I we had Dale Brown on, and uh what happened was he didn't want to do Zoom because he didn't know how to do it. <laughs> so we ended up putting him on Skype and the audio went boom. And we had a great interview and nobody can hear it. <laughs> and I don't have the heart to tell him. <laughs> yeah, but he, he said he said the same thing you did about, you know, the game now. And said they're really talented, but the play is terrible. And uh, he did say he's going to get Shaq. He goes, just send me an email. I'll talk to him. Get him on. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. You know, but uh, he was great. You know, he's he's really a good guy, and he's really smart too. We had yeah. a lot of fun with him. Yeah, he's he, he'd be good on an interview like this. He'd be very good. Yeah, and he was. You know, he mm-hmm. really was. And uh, he was telling us all the stuff he did, and all the people he's met. Mother Teresa. Wow. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Coach, I, I wanted. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Bob. No, go ahead, Rob. I was just going to ask you. I I read something where you kind of helped develop the game in China. I've been over there doing a lot of clinics before. I went over there and spoke to, to all the coaches, give plenty. I tell you, this is a great story. I went over there and I went over there when it was communistic. Mm. And it's still communistic. But yeah. it's, it's capitalized now. now. But 
Right. I was over there and, and, and of course we had an interpreter and I learned this, this was a great deal. They put chairs around the floor, right on the baseline and sideline. And there were about 85 coaches in those chairs. And I, and I put on a clinic for three days and I threw an interpreter and, and I can't believe one person ever moved. They never smiled, they never moved, they never laughed, they never they just never moved. And I, you know, I said, I didn't know how it was going to come out. And I finally, I said, goodbye, I'm leaving and this and that, you know, at the end of it. And uh, I'm walking off the floor and all of them got up and gave me a standing ovation. Wow. And I, I about cried. I thought, it, wow, that was really special for me. And, so I've had an opportunity to go back two or three other times and, uh, and I give clinics to all the coaches in the area and they bring them all in and, uh, and uh, you know, they love that. Uh, I was in, uh, I was in uh, Wanzhou, which is maybe a couple hours from Hong Kong, right on the Southern part of China. And uh, given, I gave a clinic for six days, 36 hours on the floor, you know. I mean, it's hard to know that kind of much basketball. But we'd go out. We went out to dinner one night, and we went to this huge area, surrounding area. And there must have been 50 basketball courts. Wow. And they're playing three on three, and there must have been 70,000 kids out there playing waiting to play at three on three, you get beat, you get off. And they're, they're all at three on three on different, at different baskets. I mean, it's just unbelievable how they love basketball over there. Wow. Yeah, I know they do. I mean, they still love Yao Ming. He's like their hero. So yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's really great. And the style of play, are they emulating it the right way? Or are they doing, yeah. are they in love with a three pointer too? Tell you what, they they know they know how to play. They they're really good passers and dribblers, great shooters. They just don't have any upper body strength. They're really really weak. You know, you hit them here yeah. and they go flying over there. Oh, hurt. <laughs> but, well, Europe uh, is pretty fundamental now too, and well, they've caught up a little bit. Europe's different. Well, when uh, Jack Ramsey and I went to Zagreb, Yugoslavia, and spoke to 500 European coaches during FIBA. And uh, uh, that's when uh, that's when uh, the Yugoslavian team had Tony Kukoc and and Vladi Divac and and that group of guys and and uh, they were they're really good players, really good. And they've taught the and you know we in America have gone to Europe for years and taught the game of basketball and they've learned it well. Right, and I, it, it was slow in coming because I. I remember John Sally said one time, he's like, oh, the NBA is like, you know, pros and, and Europe is like kindergarten. And he did say that, you know, but now they have so caught up there. At times, I think they're maybe better because they're more fundamental. And a lot of the, you know what I think is interesting? Luka Donick, he, he already said, he goes, this is the easiest league I've ever, I've ever had a shoot in. They don't play D here. Oh, he said that. Yeah, well, they're a lot more physical over there, though. They, they let yeah. you back. Yeah. You know, if you take Dantic and, uh, and uh, Jokic from Denver, and boy, those two guys are just terrific, terrific players. Yes, they and, are. And the Witski. And right. so they're, they're good. Some, some of them are good. Some of them are really good. The Yugoslavians are really good players. Right. Well, Parker was from France, right? Tony was a great player. Parker was from France. Right. I went over there. I went over there to recruit the kid that went to Gonzaga. He was playing on a team, and the agent called me and says, Hey, you know that your player, J.R. Henderson's playing tonight. I said, Really? Hmm. So I went to the game, and he's playing on the same team as Tony Parker. Wow. And then next wow. year, uh, San Antonio drafted Tony Parker. Wow. So I got to- yeah, they, they, they're definitely. I was in better. Paris. Yeah. That right. Was- right. Is Stefan Marbury yes. still playing in China? Stefan's <laughs> over in China. He's made a, he's made a done really really well over there. Another guy that's done really well is the ex BYU player Jimmer for Jimmer for dead. Yeah, he's he's they, he's making million over there. They tell me because he's just so popular and 
and he can really score the ball too. Yeah, you know, Jimmer's from my neck of the woods. I'm from upstate New York, so we all know Jimmer. Yeah, yeah, he's doing really well over there. You know, uh, when Tyus was in the NBA, I went to see him one time, and he invited me to go to the hotel. And just me and him were up there, and we're, we're watching TV for a minute. And I know the NBA was ready to – they were thinking about going on strike, and that was the year they made, I think, Patrick Ewing their player rep. And the players did not win that time. The NBA owners actually won. And I looked at him, and I go, you know what, guys? I think they're really going to not win this time. They're going to go on strike. He goes, you think so? I go, mm-hmm. And I no sooner told him that at the end of that year, he ended up going to Europe, signing with Italy, and becoming the MVP of the Italian League. He, he must have uh, took my advice because he got out. He's like, if they go on strike, oh, that's not good. I'm out of here. You know? He won a national championship in 1995. In 1999, mm-hmm. he and George Zidig were on the Lithuanian national team, and they won the FIBA. Right. They won, they won the European Cup. Right. So in right. four years, he won the national championship in America, and he and George Zidig won the European championship with Lithuania. Yeah. Coach, what's the makeup of the uh, U.S. national team looking like for the upcoming Olympics? Well, they tell me that uh, LeBron is iffy, but Durant wants to play and Kawhi Leonard wants to play. Oh, that's good. So, uh, yeah, if they have those guys, and uh, I hope James Harden plays, and then that will be good enough for me. Yeah. Um, I'm a huge James Harden fan. I kind of noticed that, Coach. Huge. I, I kind of noticed that. that. Yeah. Um, how bad is LeBron's leg? You know, they don't talk about it very much. It's a high ankle sprain. So, you know, uh, those can be two to two to four to six weeks. And, right. and I, I, I worry more about Davis, not, you know, he had an Achilles. An yeah, Achilles, because the Achilles nothing, right? Nothing to play around with. Right. Nothing to play around with. Because sometimes when you rupture that, you're not the same player coming back. So that's right. And my that's terrible. I asked my brother about it. He goes, Bob, the longer he stays out, the worse it is. They're just not telling you. Yeah. He goes, yeah. if he's out for any length of time, he goes, he could be. And, and they think, he said that they think that he kind of tweaked it enough where they don't want to risk it because if he plays again, it's going to snap. So, yeah, they don't care where they finish. LeBron is so good. He can, he, yeah. He's so good. He's so good. They can they can give anybody they want to the most valuable player, but every year LeBron James is the most valuable player in the NBA. Right, and and they um and they picked up um the guy from Cleveland, the big center, right, Drummond. They picked up Drummond. Yeah, he yeah. he hurt his toe last night. He had to leave the game in the second quarter. Well, I'm a Celtic fan, so you know I don't want them breaking thought, my record. <laughs> he, I I thought Drummond should have gone to the Celtics. They me too. Really, What's Danny Ainge doing? He's driving me nuts. I gotta really, tell you. Well, they wanted him, but I don't think they got him. But he 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 would have been the exact thing that the Celtics need. I thought they should have had him. I th- I think they could if he played it right. They could have traded for Davis when he was still a player before he was a free agent. Danny blew that. They had all those picks, and he just wanted to hoard them. Look, picks are great, but sometimes right. unless there's a can't miss, you use them to get a great player. People forget about that part. It drives are, me you crazy. A, are you a Suedo general manager? Big <laughs> time. I got to tell you, the, the, I, this is true. In 2008, I know that James Posey had a lot to do with our winning. Okay. Because, and he, he won it also in Miami with Shaq. He was a big reason. And I happened to run into Danny Ainge at the garden. And I stopped and I go, sign him back. And he just kind of looked at me. I go, just sign him back. Right. And he was just like, oh, I think McDice. I go, not McDice. He can't stay healthy. Just sign him back. And he's like, oh. And he kind of looked at me like he was stuttering. I'm like, he's not going to sign him back. He's going to blow it. I know it. And he did. He did not sign him back. Believe Next me. Next on the sports show, Danny Ainge, guest star. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rob. No, but, but, but you know what? Um, it, it kind of, it, like, I can, one thing about my brother and I, we're both really good at judging talent. And, I played basketball in my life, and I was a pretty good player. Believe it or not, Coach, I could shoot the lights out. No, Ask I, Tyus. So t- you know, Ed O'Bannon said this about me. I kid you not. You got, We were down in North Carolina, and we're playing. And, and Anthony was, like, taping everybody at my brother, Tony. And, and uh, I said to him, I go, uh, can I take a basketball and shoot? And you guys were just ready to leave, hop on the bus. And we drove, my friends and I were down there. He goes, yeah, go ahead. And Tyus was still sitting on the bench before he got on the bus. And Ed was standing there. 
And I go, hey, Tyus, watch this. And he's out there behind the three. And I look at him away from the basket. And I just turn around and go, boom. And he went, wow. And it went in. And I, I mean, like 10 in a row. And when we got to the hotel, Ed came up to me and goes, that was the best shooting I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I've been playing every day since I was 18, since I was a kid. And, and uh, but we're really good at judging talent. And I knew it was Posey. I knew that Anthony Davis was the best player. And LeBron knew it, too. And that's why he did it. And Danny Ainge reminds me of the mad scientist. He just likes collecting, you know, draft picks. Oh, just pouring it back until the whole lab blows up. That's just, I don't know. And he would have been out of there if, if he didn't luck out and get Garnett when he did. Because there were Celtic fans that wanted him out. They, and I'll tell you one other thing, Coach. Being a Celtic fan for as long as I have. And I remember John Havlicek. He was my first, he was my hero. People go, who's after? I go, he was Bird before Bird. Put it that way. You know? And, and uh, they never in their team history ever had uh, a player lead the league in scoring. And yet they had all those championships. It took forever the Lakers to catch them, you know. And, and Arback would tell them, you better not lead the league. You're getting fined and you're paying for it. And I'm making sure you're paying for it. I was at the Final Four one year and I'm walking through the hotel and I ran into Red Auerbach. Yeah. And I'm not even sure. I, I didn't even know he knew me. Jimmy, Jimmy, come here. No kidding. Call me Jimmy. <laughs> it was funny. Nice. First name basis. That's yeah, how it's done. He says, where are you going? I said, I'm going to go watch him practice. The final four teams on a Friday afternoon. He says, let's go. So he's put his arm through my arm, and we walked over there. And we went up high in the bleachers, or way up high in the seating. And just he and I, we sat there for four hours. I mean, it was Unbelievable. We just dissected everything and talked about every player on the floor and what how brilliant doing. how brilliant was he? Oh, he was brilliant. Yeah, he that's was, right. He was brilliant, and uh, mm -hmm. you know his teams played that way too. They shared the ball, and uh, you know it's, uh, Coach Wooden's one of the, Coach Wooden's favorites. Say it's amazing what can be accomplished when no one cares gets the credit, and that's the kind of program that our buck had. That's exactly right, and yeah. you know I mean I. I know when my brother was with the Bucks. I was a teenager. And in 1973, the Knicks, this is a true story. They everybody in my house was a Knicks fan, including Tony. And he would tell me, he was sitting on the Bucks bench and root for Frazier and Monroe to make baskets quietly, you know. And that year, the, the Celtics were 68 and 14. We were God's team. We couldn't be beaten. And sure as heck, you know, the, the Knicks with Phil Jackson, who made one point in the whole you know, seven games. They beat us in game seven in Boston. And they, and they, in New York, you know, Havlicek was playing with his sling and making all the shots with one hand. They were still going in. And the thing went double overtime. We ended up losing because, and they, now they, Phil Jackson jokes, but he goes, yeah, we inflated the ball so that, or deflated so they couldn't. He brags about it. And Don Nelson was the coach for the, the Bucks, And I always told my brother, that hurt me so much because everybody in the house was with Nick fan laughing at me. And I pouted for two weeks. I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't talk. I was so hurt. And I go, God, as long as I live, please don't ever let this Nick team win. I am still here and they have not won. That is a true story. And, and, and I've never forgiven them for it. Maybe I should have done it to the, to the Lakers because they're such a rival, but, but you know, it hurt me so much. And Don Nelson told my brother a couple of years later when he was there on the box, he goes, you know, I won a lot of championships in the 60s. But in 1973, that one year, I still can't live it down. It, it's killing me. We were the best team on earth, and they really were. They yeah. really were, you know. And Havlicek was the man. I got to meet him. I did get to meet our back because, but only for a minute. We were at the banquet because my brother was the trainer, and the All-Star game in 77 was in Milwaukee. So I said, I'm coming. <laughs> so, you know, we, I, you know, I was in high school, and I, I went. And at the banquet, Red was there talking to Rudy, uh, Rudy Mendoff. I think it was the, the, um, the ref. Uh, and Rudy was cursing like crazy. I'm just like, wow. And, you know, our back looks, I go, Red, uh, may I have your autograph? And he goes, yeah. And he signed it. And I went back to my ref, back to my brother. And I go, I got our back. He goes, how'd you get it? I go, I asked him. He goes, you're lucky. He never signs for anybody. I'm like, well, you know. But that's a true story. Not today. Not any day. He didn't do it back then, that's for sure.
Um, Coach, is there any hope for the Orlando Magic? That's my team. Are they ever going to be good again? They got a lot of work to do. They came into town last week, just a couple of days ago, and beat the Clippers right at the end. But uh, they got a lot of work to do. They, you know, everybody's stacking their teams, and that—that's you know, to yeah. me, not good. When everybody can get all the really good players, that's not—that's not the way it should be. That's why I have issues with people saying they're the best. If you're really the best, why don't you play against the best and you know don't stack it? See how good you really are. Yeah, we'll you know see. what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean we that, had a we had a thing of uh, about you know the end of last year. Uh, we got a Zoom call with our '95 team. We had 18 guys on the call from all over the country. Oh, that must have been great. 25 years, and it was one of the great 25 years. My- yeah, it's one of the great thrills of my life when all the guys went through what they're doing, where they are. One guy was in Japan. One guy was in the Czech Republic. One guy was in Bangkok, Thailand. And I tell you, it was just absolutely spectacular. Mm-hmm. And then after everybody told what they're doing, told about their families, what they're doing, then they started on each other. And I mean, it was so much fun. <laughs> It was great. It was that was true joy for me, the old coach. It was good. Yeah, and they loved you. I mean, we, we, we had, had. Uh, you know, you know, coaching is the relationships you make, right. and over the years, and and you know, I was uh, I was just sitting at home the other night, and and and, and a kid who played for me at Morningside High School. Was a great, great player. Went on and played in college. Called me and said, "Hey, coach." He says, "I got a son now," and he says, uh, "I just want to thank you for everything." You know, and this was got graduated in '73, you know? and those are the kinds of things that uh, that uh, you can't replace. You know, the bond you have when you win a championship like we did. The bond you have with your players. Uh, all of us were just we're all tied together and. and uh, no one can ever shake that or break that. It's just, it's just unbelievable. Well, and that's why the- it's, it's really nice. It's nice to win a national championship. And you deserve it. You had a blessed life. Everything has been great for you, Coach. I mean, I've had a great, great run. Yeah. You, know. you really some have. bumps in the road, but uh, that's that's everybody part has of it. a bump here and there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're still running. And you're still, still running, going. Man. Still going. Played that's 18 it. today. Feeling good. That's <laughs> it. That's all that matters. Feeling good. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, so who do you like? You, you think Gonzaga? I like Gonzaga. Yeah. Got three. The, you know, I like Gonzaga. They've been through adversity. They, they've really done a good job. It worries me a little bit that they're undefeated because, you know, it's hard to convince young kids, but these kids seem grounded, seemed, uh, well, they got, a, they got an athlete, this Suggs kid who played, he was an all state football player, an all state basketball player in Minnesota. Just <laughs> right. terrific. Uh, Jalen Suggs, the point guard, and then Kisper's been a four-year starter for him. And then this Timmy kid is just 16. He is good. He's a sophomore. He's got the best footwork I've seen in a long time. And, yeah, that's what And, and uh, they, they've got a nice squad. They're, they're really good. But Baylor's good. Houston's good. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I noticed you didn't say UCLA's good. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, they haven't been really good all year. I mean, they lost four straight games coming into the tournament. Right. And uh, uh, then they got hot, and that's what happens. And uh, Ju- they, Johnny Juzang put him on his back and carried him this far. So we'll you see sure what did. You sure yeah, did. Splendid player. Splendid player. You know what? It's funny. Mitchell, when Mitchell Butler called me today, and he said, of all the UCLA teams have gotten – how did th- this team's like the most untalented? And how did they do it? I go, yeah. I don't know. Just enjoy the ride. They're making yeah. it up as they go along. I have no idea. When you think oh. about the Kareem team, or you know, all oh, right, Hazard, right. Hazard and Goodrich teams, and oh, Kareem's yeah. teams, and Walton's teams, and Wickrow and Patterson, and, mm-hmm. and uh, Myers's team, and Marcus yeah, Johnson, yeah. and those guys, and our club. And you look around and see the talent they got. It's kind of different, but. Uh, Takes all kinds. Yeah, it sure does. And you know what? I mean, they're they're playing hard, and it seems like they they like each other, and they want to win this thing. And so they're, they're yeah. doing their best. Yeah. You know, they're playing yeah. really well. Good luck to them. Good luck to them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm pulling for them. We're all rooting yep. for them. 
Yep. Uh, is there anything else? I mean, uh, you can stay on for all night. We can talk if you want to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. I, okay, it's Coach, good. thank you so much for joining us. So we we My greatly pleasure. appreciate it. And we'd like you to come fantastic. back. Would Anytime, come back? open invite, whenever. Yeah, would Anytime. you come back, Coach? Anytime you want me to just let me know. We we sure do. And if you can bring some of your friends with you, we can have a big talk. How okay, about that? we'll do that. We'll do that. Okay, thank you Great. for helping our show. Right. And Great we to love talk you. to you guys. Thank you. For Absolutely, everything. you too. Take care, Coach. Be well. Take care, Coach. Thanks a lot. Thank Bye. you. I know. Bye. Bye. So stay tuned. That's just the beginning. More to and, come. And no, and that's absolutely true. We have so many stars coming on. Even I don't believe it. So you're gonna enjoy it. Stay tuned, like, and subscribe, folks. We'll see you on the other side with the sports show with Bob Spino. Good night, everybody.